Terry Rozier is playing so well this season. The real question is, is he playing his way back in Charlotte next year? Or is he playing his way out by the trade deadline? We break that down, plus answer your sicko satchel questions all today on Locked on Hornets. You are Locked on Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cause we live. We live. <laughs> Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. There's Doug Branson. You can find him on his Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com, and you can listen to me, Walker Mail, every weekday on Sports Radio 92.7 WFNZ. Wesson Walker, 12 to 3. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Today's episode being brought to you by FanDuel means you can make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. And that's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, we, we're talking more Terry. We can't help it this year. It's it's all about Terry Rozier. Uh, it's, it's, it's the positive. It's Brandon Miller. It's some sprinkles of Mark Williams. It's LaMelo when he's healthy. And it's Terry Rozier. Those are the topics that have been dominating the Locked on Hornets podcast. And Terry, Mm -hmm. since he's out there, since he's balling and he's healthy, something that it's really hard to check all those boxes off. This is why he leads the show, because I think we saw this on the sicko satchel, Doug. Is this where this question comes from or did you just make it up? Uh, No. Well, listen, a lot of people in the sicko satchel, which we are going to get to later in the show, a lot of great questions. The sickos really stepped it up in this one. They they are feeling, I think, particularly sick, which is why they stepped it up. Uh, But there's some great questions that are coming up. This, though, in that satchel, there are a lot of discussions about what this team will look like next season, because I think if there's one thing that, that all of us sickos can agree on, it's that this team does need to look fundamentally different on the court and in the front office you know and in the suites there needs to be a different looking charlotte hornets team next season because the current iteration i think even if it were fully healthy there would be some questions about whether this iteration of the charlotte hornets can really compete to win a playoff series okay so with that being said trying to figure out what the future holds for this organization Terry Rozier is playing so well, really all year long, but especially as of late when everybody goes down and we look to Terry to put the team on his back. His numbers are very good. He has a career high in scoring average at over 24 points per game. He has a career high in field goal percentage on almost 47% from the field. Three-point percentage, it's a little bit below what he did in that three-year run, 40, 38, 37. It's at 36 right now, but at a little less volume, too. Seven and a half, uh, seven and a half attempts per game. Seven assists, that's also a career high for Terry. You look at his free throw percentage, that is tied for his second best mark of his NBA career. And he's getting to the line, yep, you guessed it, at a career high rate, 4.2 attempts shot from the charity stripe per game. Does this mean, Doug, that the Hornets need to capitalize on his value, try to find a way to trade him because his value is never going to be higher? Hell, we just went all across the board and you heard about five different career highs posted. So does this mean a good old radio framed question? Is Terry Rozier playing his way out of Charlotte or is Terry Rozier playing his way back onto the Charlotte roster next season? Great radio question. And Terry Rozier is making this question much more difficult than he's made it in past seasons. And it's because you're really asking the question, is he more impactful on the floor with a Charlotte Hornets jersey on, or is he more impactful in what he could return in some kind of trade? The latter is more difficult to answer, more difficult to predict, because it really depends on will another team find what Terry does valuable enough? Do they do they need that on their roster to make that playoff run? And we've we've had rumors of teams sniffing around Terry Rozier before, including the Los Angeles Lakers, who who could you know after getting that in season tournament championship may now have actual championship dreams. They they could look to add guys. 
And and so, but that's that's difficult to answer. But his impact for the Charlotte Hornets is pretty easy to answer. I'll give you one more stat, Walker, and that's estimated plus minus from dunksandthrees.com. There is there are only three players this season so far that have been positive plus minus players for the Charlotte Hornets. It's been LaMelo Ball when he's healthy at plus 2.9. Mark Williams is sitting at plus 1.1. And then you have Terry Rozier at plus 2.1. So almost as impactful when he's on the floor, Terry Rozier, as LaMelo Ball this season. That's incredible. I mean, what Terry has been able to do, raise his game. And he told us that's what he wanted to do. He telegraphed this in media day. He was saying, you know, last season he got the ball a lot. He got a ton of opportunity to be the guy because LaMelo was hurt. And he didn't play as well as he wanted to, and the wins didn't come. Well, the wins aren't coming this season either. That's not really Terry's fault, but he's raised the game. You can't really question Terry. You could have questioned him last season. You cannot question him this season. And so he is, I think he is raising his trade value. It'll just be difficult to predict, you know, how other teams react to that if they want to go for somebody like Terry or or find find somebody maybe younger or, you know, or or more, more proven. You know, it's a lot of different factors to this. Um, j- just like what radio shows usually do, if somebody doesn't necessarily specifically answer the question yeah, yeah. that we got to call you out. And so okay. that one was really tough. You did a good job of breaking down the stats, but not necessarily answering. He's playing his way out or playing his way back. Well, I agree. Can I throw, can nuance. I throw, can, we, we can have, okay, nuance. I'll pick Go one. Ahead. I'll pick one. That's fine. And, and, and I'll tell you, stuff. I'll pick one and I'll tell you why. And it's for a reason I haven't even mentioned yet. And that, that I think could, I'm interested in hearing your take on this. Okay. Before Brandon Miller, it's like BC AD. Uh, before BM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would have said he's playing his way in because the Hornets need the talent and they need the shooting and they need the scoring that Terry Rozier provides. But what Brandon Miller has shown me in this early rookie period has encouraged me that he could not only replace Terry Rozier scoring sooner rather than later. Not necessarily how Terry scores, but just the volume of scoring that Terry produces. And I think he's going to be better defensively for the Charlotte Hornets because he's longer. Because he just he just projects out as a better defender. Mm-hmm. So and that and that's what Hornets fans have been craving is somebody to put alongside Lamelo Ball that can actually defend at the point of attack. And that's not again that's not Brandon Miller yet, but it could be. You're more confident that it could be than you have been in any other player the Hornets have had in that position. And so for that reason, I think, you know, he's playing his way out at this point. Yeah, even this offseason, too, it doesn't have to be by the deadline. You could still trade Terry Rozier this offseason, and that might even be what you want to do, Doug. If if you can bank on Terry continuing this type of play, and that's not a foregone conclusion. He's playing really well. I We just went over the stats. The advanced stats are there, too. You go to cleaning the glass. The assist-to-usage ratio, that's by that's double as high as it's ever been. So not only is the assist percentage up, it's very good for combo guards, but also the assist-to-usage ratio, which is how many times you can get an assist while you're having the basketball in your hands. It's Yeah, he's been a point guard way more this year than he ever has. All that to say, I think you're thinking about it on the right lines of defense. And so even if Brandon Miller's best position isn't suited in the backcourt with LaMelo, because maybe Brandon just is never quick enough to hang with the smaller shooting guards out there. That's a real thing that could happen. Brandon just might be a three where you can play him at two at times and you can play him possibly even at four at times as a stretch. But that's a why that's a ways away with, you know, the strength not being there yet. I think defensively you still have some issues, and that's still where this team struggles most. And so if if you don't think it'll ever work defensively with Terry and LaMelo, because you've invested in LaMelo and that's going to be your guy going forward, I would agree that I think even still with maybe a few more tears running down my face watching Terry leave, despite all the help that he's given this team in their time of need, I still think that you need to capitalize on that value at the deadline if the right value is there or in the off season, if the right trade is there, whenever you get your GM and then you want your future GM, the guy that's going to be here, hopefully for a while to make that decision. I'm with you, Doug. I I don't think this changes um, the ultimate decision. It definitely makes it harder to think about, but I I don't think that LaMelo and Terry is a winning 
playoff series backcourt. I just don't think that's the case. And I think it all has to do with the defensive end. And I just can't watch this team allow 130 points anymore. And to be fair to Terry, he's raised his defensive game as well. I mean, he's played a lot more physical and defensive. Yeah, there's just end. limitations. Been, You're right. There's right. I know. I totally understand. I just want to give Terry yeah. his kudos. It's not like he has been awful Terry Rozier defender like he has been in the past. One wonders if LaMelo came back, if maybe that version of Terry Rozier would creep back in, if he just feels this sense of like it's all on me, leadership kind of thing. And if LaMelo comes back, then he eases up a bit. Uh, tough, to, tough to answer that question. Mm-hmm. But I'll say this. This is why I wanted the Hornets to move on from Mitch Kupchak sooner rather than later, because I would like the future GM to make this decision and not the current one. But at this rate, that's not that's not going to be the thing at the trade deadline. I don't think they're going to make a move between now at the trade deadline for a general manager. And so all you can hope for, because being a sicko is all about holding on to the hope. All you can hope for is that Mitch Kupchak does for the Hornets what Michael Jordan may have done on his way out the door, which was give the Hornets a little gift. Michael Jordan gave the Hornets a gift in Brandon Miller, and maybe Mitch Kupchak could find it in his heart to finally do something, (laughs) make a move, bring back maximum value to a desperate team. Because teams are desperate at the trade deadline. In the offseason, they're not as desperate. You can still get stuff in return, but I I think the returns are going to be much greater at the trade deadline because – Teams are focused. They're like, oh, I can see it. We're just a couple of things away from from holding that trophy. So maybe Mitch Kupchak, on the way out, does one big deal to bring the Hornets maximum value. I would be all for that. No, that's interesting. It, with, with Have we gone full circle now, though, to the point where if we had there, – there's a deer right next to me. Goodness gracious. What's up, guys? <laughs> Holy hey. hell. We got a lot of deer. Okay, that's an omen. That's a, I think I'm going to consult – I'm going to consult my book here on, on omens <laughs> and signs and wonders. See, that's it. The Hornets, the Hornets need a deer. Yeah. They need an omen. All right. Hey, hold on. Gather around, guys. Yeah, we got some Hornets talk. What, Terry? You're saying Terry Dozier should not be back in Charlotte? Okay, that's fine. That's yeah, right. They need Terry there. Dozier. Well, that, actually, they had a Terry Dozier. It's not a, good, a little fun Terry fact. Terry Dozier, I think. Terry Deer. D-E-A-T-R. They literally had a player named Terry Dozier. We went through this uh, when we were doing our jersey. Also, the the Hornets don't need Amen Thompson. They need Omen Thompson. They do. They got to know. They do. I forget what I was even talking about. I think it was about the (laughs) offseason, the GM thoughts. We can get to that in just a moment. Stick around. Stick around, guys. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. (laughs) Well, we'll break down more of what the Hornets could do this offseason as it compares to the trade deadline. And then we'll also rummage through the sicko satchel. It's been a while, but Doug was right. You guys came with a bunch of great questions. So we'll answer those on the other side. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Anything like that. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and it's suited to uh, your schedule, fit your schedule exactly. And all you can do um, is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Again, this thing is designed to help you as much as possible. Celebrate the progress you You've already made by visiting betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P, betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. More locked on Hornets ahead. All right, the deer situation. We have one in the corner right now, having not jumped the fence to be with everyone else. So we'll see. Uh, it looks like this one is liking what she's hearing. So. She's sticking around here, Doug. Yeah, like Bambi in the front yard. Yeah, we do. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff over here. I should close the windows next time. All right, let's go to the sicko. I guess the GM stuff. I'll finish that real quick. What, what Before I got distracted by the deer, I think with the GM stuff, it's it, it reminds me of uh, Marty Herney when he comes to the Carolina Panthers for his second reign as general manager. When you make a decision so late as to fire Dave Gettleman, like two weeks or a week before training camp starts. And then you just don't have the pool. You don't have the entire pool to choose from. 
It's like, okay, well, I guess we'll just go back to Marty Herney. The Hornets did this with Steve Clifford. They, they did the exact same thing just at the head coaching position. So it feels like the Hornets would be doing the same thing if they got rid of Mitch Kupchak by the trade deadline, and then they would just upgrade what or promote Buzz Peterson. I, I mean, I, there's you're not going to hire somebody from a different team at this point. You'd have to wait for the offseason. And so if you don't have your GM in place, then I wonder if it's better for Mitch Kupchak, the guy that we expect to be out, to just not do anything. Have we gone full circle? Oh, and now we're actually asking him to not do something. This is my question, because I think now doing something might actually be helping or hurting. I'm sorry. If doing something is now hurting the team because you're not going to be here any longer anyway, are, are we asking him not to do anything, Doug? I, this is this is my question that I'm wrestling with. No. No, he's a he's a professional. He's yeah. a general manager. He's do, he's done good things before. He has made trades before. He just didn't do it in Charlotte. And not he's here. Done some, he just did, yeah, just yeah. just not here. Right. And so it's not as if, it's not that he's incapable. It's that he's unwilling. That's all that's all we've ever said. We've never questioned the man's competence. We've just questioned his willingness uh to use all the tools available to him and and not be so determined that mm-hmm. this that the roster that he had in his hands was the roster that was going to deliver playoff success. Uh, so no, I I would want him if you know because again none of this is guaranteed. We're sitting here talking as if like oh well yeah I mean they're they're definitely going to clean house but look this is not a, an ownership group that came in pounding the table saying we're going to we're going to bring a championship to Charlotte in five years and ten years and fifteen years they they set no goals. They said, we're going to stay the course. So, yeah, at the trade deadline, when you've got a couple of assets in Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward that could be attractive to other teams and bring back, I think I would hope that they bring back assets that would lead to winning sooner rather than later. Because, I, you know, a lot of folks that, you know, I would say don't know as much about where the, the heads are at in terms of management and what what they want the goals to be and the fact that they just signed LaMelo Ball to the contract are saying, well, tear it down to the studs, go rebuild again. But I just don't think that's smart. I think you got to go out and find some players that fit Brandon Miller and LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams and go and put a team together that can get LaMelo playoff experience. And so I hope that he's doing a move that not only brings back draft assets, but does bring back players you know, a a three and D guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands a lot, but it just has that great defensive mentality, a power forward that is a a legit good rebounder, a a, a center that can shoot. I mean, there are things that this team absolutely needs and they could go and find it on the trade market. It's certainly they need more star power, but that's not the only thing they need. And they could find it in a trade for Terry Rozier or Gordon Hayward. All right. In that answer, you mentioned the timeline. So let's go to the sicko satchel and answer that first question we talked about, Doug, regarding any kind of timeline to possibly win a playoff series. What is that? Oh, yeah. You want me to read it? Okay, great. (laughs) Um, You are the keeper. Look, I don't want to take this away from you. You talked about how somebody else was stealing the thing that was yours yesterday with Miracle After Midnight. I don't want to take the sicko satchel from you. This is your thing. So what question do you have for us? Uh, so uh, let me look here. Do you want the okay? Okay, there's two questions that are in this vein, and I think this is the one you want. This is at S Palka who asks, "Do mm-hmm. you think that the Charlotte Hornets will be able to go to the playoffs and win in a short period of time, two to three years at maximum?" Is that is that the one you were looking for? Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay, you great. picked the right one. I appreciate your help. Uh, yeah, two to three years max. It's it's really quick, and it's tough to do that in the NBA. This is what we've talked about too, though, Doug, that, you know, we'll start discussing more and more. The Hornets are set up right now to have a very high draft pick. And so depending on if you want to use it, whoever is there available, I think with the fourth best odds right now to try to take a stab at somebody and say, hey, maybe he can help us right now. Look, we see this all the time with rookies that even come in and help right away. Or do you want to trade that? high first round pick, like top five pick, if you end up selecting based on the odds, do you want to trade that for somebody that you think can help you win right now? And so if that's the case and all goes well, it, it's, a, you know, some caveats baked in here that everything has to go right. But maybe that does put you on the fast track to get what you need, 
Brandon Miller improves. You have to have internal improvement. Mark Williams does the same thing. P.J. Washington, everybody stays healthy. P.J.'s back, helping you defensively. Maybe Miles Bridges is gone, and then you spend some of the money that you have in free agency on things that help. Uh, is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Maybe I'm sitting the fence just like you did in the first question, so I'll even it here. But I, I do think it is possible, given how you have LaMelo, Brandon Miller, Mark Williams. You're not, you're, you're not completely void of talent, Doug. It, there are some ways to, to get back to win a playoff series, possibly um, within a three-year time frame. But, yeah, it's definitely not likely. A lot has to go right. Yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, you got to do something Pacers level when they – stole Tyrese Halliburton you know and and so that that goes more to your wait till the wait till the offseason wait till the draft when maybe you could acquire some young talent that's a little bit more ready to go because I think it it is a tough proposition it it could happen but it's a tough proposition to to draft in the top three and draft you know a 19 or 20 year old uh, from you know G League Ignite or an international player or maybe a college player, one year college player, and ask that player to be like a playoff impact level player year one or somebody that gets you to the playoffs. But to answer the question here, two to three years to make the playoffs, I think that's doable because I do th- think this team does have enough talent to make a play in. And then it's all about can can they get over that hump at that point? Do they add enough to the roster defensively? And, and you know, possibly new coach, whatever, that can get them into that play in. And then once you're in the play in, once you're on the dance floor, you can dance. But but playoff series win, I don't think two to three years is is very realistic unless they made a big move for a big star that they could add next to Lamelo Ball because Brandon Miller will be better next year. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I think he's he's improving at a astronomical rate already in his rookie season. So it's going to be exciting to see all the improvements that he makes as he's getting bigger. But I, you know, I don't think he's like star level for another two seasons at least. And yeah, so, 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 you know. but that that's the thing though. So, so at that point, it, it's going to be it's weird to think about now. We we think about Lamelo being so young because he is, but now you're approaching 25 year old Lamelo. Everything has to be under the umbrella that everyone's healthy. But 25 year old Mello, having played, you know, yeah, I know. That's, that's the most broken umbrella. I, I know. That's a, that's a very tenuous it's, umbrella. It, it's raining on you. you, you yeah, have, one of the little one of the little metal things is hanging down. It doesn't go the little thing when you press the button. It doesn't go mm-hmm. all the way up. When you it releases, it releases backwards. Where like the whole thing goes out, you got to pull it back. Your umbrella is basically a hula hoop. It's a wide open circle. <laughs> It's raining on you. You might as well not even bring it. But if that umbrella were to be patched up, then it all needs to be that the team is healthy. So, but LaMelo, 25 years old. Now you're talking about like, what, a seven-year vet at that point? What we're talking about, six-year vet? Brandon Miller, I think a lot rides on him. Second overall pick that already looks the part. How much can he expand his game? And and he's already not going to fail, which is something we talked about as soon as he was drafted. No way that guy fails. He's not doing it now. So it's all about what kind of star power he has. He's going to fit with whoever. I, I feel like he's pretty damn malleable where he can fit with anybody with his skill set. And so now you bring in this high draft pick if you hit on him or if you hit on whatever the trade is. Yeah, I, there are paths there. There are paths there to make it Maybe a little more realistic than I gave it credit for first reading that question. We'll see. Another question, or do you want to go to the last segment here, Doug? Oh, let's go. Let's head to the last segment. Okay. All right, let's do it. Final segment still to come. Coming up next, Locked on Hornets. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. All right, we need to figure out this whole sickos thing. You know, you'll you'll get what I mean here in a second. But we've always called our listeners sickos. Now the question is, do we need a new nickname? Is there a nickname for Hornets fans and Panthers fans combined? We'll discuss it coming up next. Before we do that, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel for Week 18, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet that's $150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab you can make a parlay in the parlay hub that's the best way to find popular parlays 
you can even do more than that. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. And then you can have some easy bets there, possibly. You can certainly go to FanDuel.com and decipher for yourself. Do we have a spread on this game for the Chicago road game before they're back at home here, Doug? I do not. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, that's okay. I was, I'm sorry, oh, no, I was looking... Up. I was looking at Eastern Conference standings because we have another interesting question in the satchel about Eastern Conference standings, and that's what I was looking at. But if you if you stall for just a few more seconds, I can pull up this line. Okay, um, I can't. Let's just move on. Make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. More locked on Hornets ahead. All right, that was a flawless read. I appreciate everybody's help on that. And Doug, you, you did find something though, even if it wasn't a line on the Chicago game, you did have something you wanted to bring to the listeners' attention. Yeah, they don't. They don't. FanDuel does not have the line for. Uh, they have the line for tonight's game, but they do not have the lo- tonight's games in the NBA. But they do mm-hmm. not have the line for the Bulls game yet for the Hornets. But they do have NBA Finals. Uh, props here and the Charlotte Hornets you can get them at plus 100,000 to win the NBA finals all right I don't advise that don't do that yeah please please, no 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 I don't don't advise it do what you want but (laughs) I don't want it yeah I want to advise it I don't advise that all right how many uh uh sicko satchel questions do you want to roll with here Doug do you want to go straight to the one that you were focused on or is there time for a couple of other ones I've got I've got time for that one, but I want to get to Mr. Purple Tornado first, who asks, Have where to. do you think the Hornets would stand in the East if they were fully healthy this entire season? And that's why I was looking during the break. I was looking at the Eastern Conference standings. The Hornets currently in 13th place, uh, lucky number 13, at 8 and 24. The Raptors uh, would be next up 14 and 20. The uh, Bulls are your first play-in team at 15 and 21 so just a game up on the raptors so what do you think if they were fully healthy are they in the play-in are they out play in play out so it's a real jumbled mess from the 9 to the 11 12 seed because Mm -hmm. brooklyn is in the 9 seed in the play-in right now they're 15 and 20 whereas toronto is three teams back and they're 14 and 20. Yeah, One yeah, yeah. less win, but the same amount of losses. Are they, they're basically in, they, they could be in the same spot is where I'm trying to get to. Even it, the injuries have killed them. It, they certainly have. But how many wins have all of these injuries hurt them for? Like six? Do you give them six, seven, eight more wins? If you give them eight, that means that puts them in the nine seed above Brooklyn. But they're not as good as New York. They're 19 and 15. I don't think the Hornets with a fully healthy roster is as good as a New York Knicks team. And so, Doug, I mean, they might be in the play in, but the best I could see them doing is a nine seed right now. If they had either normal health luck like everybody else or if I mean, even if it was pristine, to be honest with you, I don't see them getting to New York level. If they were fully healthy, I could see a nine or ten. Yeah, you know, I could see them get it getting as far as that. But I think if normal injury luck, meaning you have a guy out here and there, not the apocalyptic yeah. injury luck that the Hornets have had recently, then I think you're probably looking at a Toronto Raptors situation. You have to think about a couple of things. They've played a lot of these teams and beaten them, except for the Bulls. They lost by uh, 11 to the Bulls earlier this season. I don't think they'll ever beat the Bulls again. It's just like, I don't, it's just something about Chicago. The Zach they cannot, Levine shot. Yeah, I, I, know. I know. They just cannot figure out how to beat Chicago. But they have beaten the Nets in that boat race. They've beaten the Hawks. They've beaten the Raptors once. They did lose to the Raptors as well. But I, I think they've competed with these teams. And even on this West Coast road trip, you can see a team that is competing hard for – uh, their their own pride, and, and also I think it's a testament to Clifford that he's gotten these guys to still compete. They just haven't been able to complete, and so I think you know you take one, at least one of the one more of the games from the West Coast road trip. I think you can sprinkle three or four more wins. So I give them like five or six more wins, which will put them right there at twelve with the Raptors, which will be fine. Like then we could have the discussion that hey they beat Sacramento, maybe they can make a little back half run here. You look at that. 13-14 team that was Al Jefferson, Kimba Walker, Bobcats team, that team was sitting at this point in the season 
at around like 15 and 20, and they made a huge back half run and won 43 games that season and got into the playoffs. And so, like, it, Think, it's yeah. not crazy, but at eight and 24, if they made now they can make the play in, they could back in beep, beep, beep into that 11 slot. That's within reason. But, you know, to, to be like competitive for an, uh, an eight, an eight seed or a seven seed or anything like that, that's going to be tough. Which and I should and, and I got this wrong. I got this wrong. I was looking, I, numbers are hard for me. Uh, so the first play in spot is the Hawks at 14 and 19 at 10. And then Bulls on the outside looking in at 15, 21. Just want to clean that up. You're good. So, but with, with all of the, even if they're healthy and they're still barely in the play in tournament, or maybe they're solidly in there, but as a, nine ten seed doesn't that just answer our question that we had in the first segment uh maybe not as specifically as it pertains to terry rogier but as it pertains to trading terry or gordon and terry's the guy that would probably bring in the most value right like if if they're fully healthy then and they're still only a nine ten seed like that's the most success that this core has ever had and then they get blown out in the playing tournament a couple times right i it's time to move on. Like so many people have talked about it. And and I feel like Terry, because you're not getting rid of LaMelo over Terry, Mark Williams over Terry, Brandon Miller over Terry. I Now we're probably in some kind of territory where you can talk about the other players, but it's just, it's time, man. It, it feels like it's time. Well, the tough part is you brought in Steve Clifford because, well, you brought in Steve Clifford because you couldn't get Kenny Atkinson, but <laughs> yeah. you... He was the guy that, he, he was the only number you knew. He was... He just, hey, yeah, you just, it, just flipped it, through the it, Rolodex. It, Everybody else was taken. <laughs> you landed on Clifford. Oh, yeah, he's not doing anything. Let's bring him in. Okay, but when you brought in Clifford, your thought process probably was, hey, this guy can turn a team that got blown out twice in play-ins because they couldn't play any defense. He can turn that defense around while hopefully maintaining the offensive success. Mm -hmm. But in that thought process, you have to be thinking, that's going to take time, and you're going to lose games early as you try to figure all of that out and get the team to play better. It's not going to, it's not, it's not instant ramen noodles. That's something you have to work through. And, and Cliff historically Clifford, that's what he does. He works through the first half of the season to get things figured out in the back half that the, his teams typically make runs. And so, you know, that's when I take this question, like where would their record be? Because Clifford didn't get that opportunity to do it with a full squad last season, he would have done it this season. So I think they still would have lost plenty of games. You just would have been in a position to, to, to make a run in the back half, whereas now it's a little bit tougher. All right, let's get to this final sicko satchel question for this show, although I want to bring a couple of these up tomorrow as well. There, here's uh, one from Kevin Smith, who's doing a little uh, reporting for us from the other side of the Locked On uh, podcast network, at least in mm. Charlotte, the Locked On Panthers podcast. Kevin writes in, Julian Council has adopted sickos to refer to Panthers fans too. Do we need a new word or phrases to describe those of us who have suffered so long as fans of both teams? My suggestion is the damned. We who maintain our allegiance in spite of no rational expectation of success <laughs> anytime in the foreseeable future. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for writing in. It's, it's an interesting suggestion, but I'm going to say I am never giving up the name sickos. Uh, that means too much to me. I'm not giving it up for any for any uh, creative name that anyone comes up with. And I'll just say to Julian Council, got my eyes on you. Kunkel, he moved out of town when I had my eyes on him. So he's gone. He's in Houston now. Julian Council, I got my eyes on you. Eric Collins, I'm looking for my check in the mail on Miracle After Midnight. I got my yeah. eyes on you. People. Just give me just give me credit or give me money. Or give me both, honestly. I, I take both. Well, Quit look. stealing my stuff. No, no, th this is this is real sicko behavior, thinking that we are the only ones that use the word sicko. Like, that's sicko, but, but sicko satchel, I'm with you. And plus, here, real quickly, before you get angry at me as well, now, great, now you have your eyes on Julian. I got Eric you. Well, my eyes me. have been on you for a long time. <laughs> yeah, they have. I've, I feel you watching me every step I take. Got that look in my eye. Yeah, no, you do. You absolutely do. <laughs> but you got to give Julian some grace here because it's the Carolina Panthers under David Tepper – who have experienced the type of sickness that Hornets fans have felt this entire second iteration of the franchise, because now you have new ownership with David Tepper and nothing good has come from that tenure. And now we're rock bottom where the owner is throwing a drink at fans at, at away games. Like I, I'm understanding of the sickness and the people that follow being sickos. I, I get that it wasn't under Tepper, but this Panthers team and Panthers fans 
have experienced something that they can anchor their hope to. They've been to a Super Bowl twice. That's right. And yes, lost both of them in pretty brutal fashion. I get it. But you've been to a Super Bowl twice. The Hornets have never been to an Eastern Conference Finals. They have not won a uh, playoff series in now 22 years. That is be when you still have hope for a team that hasn't been to the that hasn't won a playoff series, not not gotten to a not gotten gotten to an Eastern Conference Finals or gotten to a Finals. They've not won a playoff series in 22 years. That is sickness. I don't look whatever the Panthers the Panthers fans have the sniffles. Okay, the Hornets fans are sick. The Panthers fans are just like they they just need to blow their nose one good time. I mean, this is crazy. I, <laughs> no, I, I get no, it. It's not that. It's no. not that minor. It's I look what. what what is the person called that actually follows both teams now and is a Why, fan? So of maybe that's what lot. Kevin is. Maybe that's what Kevin is insinuating here. He maybe is. I'm. I should take his question to mean that he that if you follow both teams, that you should be the damned or the dead. You might just be dead <laughs> if you follow both teams. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first to listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods. In your meantime, when you're not listening to Locked On Hornets, go read about them on Doug's Substack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. He will keep his eyes on you there on his Substack. Go you to Julian's listen. comments. Tell him I got my eyes on him. All right. Yeah, please Flood do his that. comments. Will Kunkel, Eric Collins. Yes, let everybody know that Doug Branson is watching you. He knows my and, number. Uh, he probably does. <laughs> Maybe and, it's uh, Temecula. <laughs> Listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to preview the Chicago Bulls game and end the week. 